by a pass that includes losses in four Super Bowl games. Their 36-year-old quarterback, Jim Kelly, is on a quest for a Super Bowl victory before he retires. And Kelly knows the pursuit is a personal race against the clock. For me, it's ticking, but for a lot of the other players, some of the younger players, I think they're starting to get that winning sensation. There is a sense of urgency right now, but um, when you're in my position, you've been here before, it's always a sense of urgency. Jim Kelly led the Bills back into the playoffs last season. They won both their games this year. As the hourglass empties, Kelly is hopeful that the sands of time will not bury his chance for a Super Bowl ring. Now is the time for two of the NFL's best, the Buffalo Bills and the AFC champion Pittsburgh Steelers to go at it on ABC's Monday Night Football. evening. Three Rivers Stadium, the scene of so many. Pittsburgh Steelers Herarts will be sold out once again tonight, 59,000 plus. The Buffalo Bills, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Good AFC matchup for you tonight. Two division champions from a year ago. The Steelers and Bills met here last January in the divisional playoff, and the Steelers, of course, won that game 40-21, and Buffalo went home. The Steelers went on to lose to Dallas in Super Bowl 30. The Steelers are 1-1 one in one the season thus far. They were stunned by Jacksonville in their opener. They bounced back to beat Baltimore, but this is a team that was hurt by free agency. It's not the team you saw last January in the Super Bowl and a team that is seriously hurt tonight defensively. Meanwhile, Buffalo comes in with two wins. They weren't good-looking wins. They were kind of ugly against the Giants. At one point, they were down 17 to nothing. And then last week, of course, they beat New England. Al, the good news that they are undefeated coming into the night. The bad news, they're coming in here because... They have been hurt here many times. Yeah, and Frank, they've won in weird ways. They fumbled five times on opening night against the New York Giants. In two games, Jim Kelly has thrown two touchdown passes and four interceptions. He's been sacked nine times in the two games, and Thurman Thomas has averaged a measly 2.5 yards per carry. But this is an extremely resilient football team. Going back to the start of last season, in their last nine games that have been determined by seven or fewer points, they have won every one of them as frank said this is a mature team the clock is ticking jim kelly is 36 bruce smith is 33 thurman thomas is 30 the coach marv levy is 71 and their only owner in history ralph wilson is 77 this is a fully ripened football team that comes into pittsburgh which has been dan a house of horrors for them against the team that loves to play when the lights come on. The they sure team. do, Al. You know, this is a pretty ripe booth as well. <laughs> <laughs> In many ways. <laughs> and, and you're right about uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers loving to be here at home. Since Bill Cowher took over this franchise in 1992, they played five Monday nighters here at Three Rivers. Their record, 5-0, and oh, and they just weren't eking out wins. They have won by a cumulative score of 116 to 27. They have made us work in the second half. Well, tonight they are a different team defensively. Three of their starters who are penciled in are gone. Two of them, Ray Seals and Greg Lloyd, for the season. Can Buffalo exploit the advantage there? We'll find out tonight. Offensively for Pittsburgh tonight, Mike Tomczak gets his second start. Cordell Stewart, though, will handle all of the short yardage and goal line situations at quarterback. The big guy for Pittsburgh tonight could be their new running back, Jerome Bettis, who came over from the Los Angeles Rams. The coach of the Steelers is Bill Cower. This 39-year-old is down on the field right now with Lynn Swan. And Dan, he loves his game. As a matter of fact, Bill, the last 10 regular season games between you and the Buffalo Bills, the home team has won. Is it preparation or is it just this team? 
Well, I think the crowd plays a big factor, but uh, these are two good teams, Len, and I think the team that makes the least mistakes will win. You know, you should get an award for creativity, the injuries and the problems you've had in your defense, but last year and this year, you've been able to put it together. But can you still be as aggressive? Well, I think so, and it comes from internal leadership, and we got some good internal leadership on this team with the veterans, and, hey, we have no choice. We have to. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, good luck Len. to you. Okay. Now. All right, thank you, Lynn. Beautiful shot from the Goodyear blimp looking down into Three Rivers Stadium where the Steelers won last week beating the Baltimore Ravens after their horrible opener on the road at Jacksonville when they lost Lloyd and lost the game. So the Steelers coming in one and one and the Bills two and oh after their overtime win against the Giants when they overcame a 17 point deficit and then last week's win against New England. Charles Johnson is back to receive the kick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steve Christie to put it in the air. Jaheen Arnold, a rookie, also back for Pittsburgh. And we're underway at Three River Stadium as the kick is taken by Johnson at the six-yard line, up past the 20, and then gang tackled at the 25-yard line. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomzak who performed very well last week. Mike has been around with Chicago, Cleveland, Green Bay, and now here in his 12th season. Eric Pegram starts at running back. We'll see Jerome Bettis before long. Lester is the fullback. Johnson and Hastings outside, and Bruner, the second-year tight end. Jackson, Wolford, a former Bill, the great Dermonte Dawson, Stye, and Strelzik, the interior five. And that is Cordell Stewart who gets the start. He's in motion, and they get him into the game immediately, but Henry Jones smells it out and stops him after a two-yard game. So Cordell Stewart, who will line up at quarterback, running back, and wide receiver for the Steelers. Defensively, the Bills play a 3-4, as do the Steelers. Hanson, Washington, and the great Bruce Smith already five sacks this year. Pop had 17 and a half sacks last year. Spielman, the ex-Lion, Maddox and Rodgers. And then the secondary, Irvin and Smith outside. Jones and Schultz are the safeties. On second down and seven. Pegram to the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and six. And that's Chris Steelman making the tackle. We talked earlier about the injuries defensively, Dan, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But they've been hurt offensively with Yancey Thigpen, their leading receiver from a year ago. Uh, he's been out for several weeks and will probably be out for even longer than that. Ernie Mills... Uh, he has not recovered from surgery after the Super Bowl. They were the two leading receivers for the Steelers a year ago. Consequently, we're seeing Cordell Stewart in there tonight, Charlie Johnson, and they will be the primary receivers. A third and six, and that is Stewart in the slot to the left. Four-man Buffalo rush, and Tomzak under pressure finds Hebram along the sideline for a first down. Oh, boy, that'll earn fan approval for Tomzak. Stood in there. He knew he was going to get hammered. He did, and he just strong-armed that ball beautifully. Yeah, he saw the hit coming. You're right, Frank. There's no way to miss it. It's Jim Jeffcoat coming right up the middle, number 77. He's right in Tom Zach's face, but Mike just takes a little stutter step to the right, and inexplicably, the entire Buffalo defense was a good five yards downfield, allowing Pegram all alone out in the flat. Opening drive of the game, Steelers at the 41-yard line. That's Corey Holiday in motion. And Pegram behind Lester finds a hole, gets into Buffalo territory. First down at the Bill 48, tackled by Schultz. Well, this is the reason that Buffalo wanted to get Chris Spielman was to shore up their run defense. People in the past, especially Pittsburgh, have been able to run the ball against Buffalo. And a good illustration here. This is one of the best run-blocking offensive lines in the National Football League. A good matchup for the Steelers is their left tackle, John Jackson, number 65. And look how he pins Bruce Smith to the inside. Fabulous blocking by Pittsburgh. And many say that the best place to go, Bruce Smith, is right at him. It's a fumble! And it is Bruce Smith in the middle of the action. I Buffalo Sam, Bills have come up with it. I Sam Rogers. Rogers. Yeah, I think he got it, Al. Rolled right to him. The Smith of... Jarring the ball loose. Hill to Hill gamble. He'll come down inside as he did it right looked, there. While looked, a collision jars it loose. Yeah, it looked like a fumbled exchange. I'm not sure that uh, the exchange from Tomzak was ever a clean one. Let's see if he did have control. There's the handoff. 
No, the he ball, never did handle it. All right, the ball is out before Bruce Smith ever even gets there. Mm -hmm. Tim Lester wasn't able to handle it all. Looked like Tomczak put it right in the midsection. You might have saw Smith slanting down that line. That's, so a promising start, but a fumble ends that initial thrust. And now the Buffalo Bills with Thurman Thomas. His first carry of the night nets him four. Jim Kelly, chosen number one in the draft in 83, but played in the USFL and joined Buffalo in 86. Thomas, the running back, and then the three wideouts. The rookie Moles with Early and Reed. Johnson, the tight end. Fina, Lucina, Hall, Ostrowski, and Parker up front. The no huddle offense employed by the Bills for years on second and six. It's Thomas losing yardage. Parnell Lake, who blitzes a lot, coming through to stop him. Defensively now for the Steelers. They, like the Bills, play a 3-4 with Buckner, Steed, and Henry up front. And then the linebackers, the movement necessitated by the Lloyd injury, Ravati, Kirkland, Osaski, and Brown going from inside to outside. Woodson and Williams, Lake, and Perry in the secondary. Third down and eight. And Kelly throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Andre Reed. So it's three and out. Darren Perry with the coverage and Rod Woodson on the blitz. Well, there is a series that pretty much, I think, identifies the way the Buffalo Bills have been playing football offensively so far in the 96th season. Talk about getting great field position and totally squandering it. That's exactly what the Bills did right here. And they saw the That's, blitz early yeah. because the blitz has been so effective in their previous two games against the Giants and New England. Kelly having been sacked nine times. Chris Moore floats one. Good-looking kick because it bounces at the eight-yard line and rolls out of bounds at the three. Near perfection. Chris Moore. So the Steelers pin deep with 11-11 to go in the opening quarter. Nothing, nothing in Pittsburgh. This is the new one, right? <laughs> I had a few new this. Ah, nice. Good stuff. So is it just called Miller? That's it? That was my second guess. I knew what genre it was in. The genre of beer, that is. The big flavor that goes down easy. Miller. Chester, it's Miller. Taste the taste of new Miller beer. The one with the red label. Yep, red, white, and blue. Can't go wrong. New Miller beer. Taste the taste. This isn't even being filmed, right? You're just having a good time? <laughs> It's about change. About breaking rules and making new rules. About building machines more in harmony with humanity. It's about questioning everything. It's about change. The new Dodge. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Miller Beer, made with the heart of the hops for a big flavor that goes down easy. Prudential. Circuit City, the choice for price selection and service. And the new Dodge, we're thinking ahead. Well, it's not very attractive field position for the Steelers, but how fortunate they must feel to turn the ball over in their own end of the field and not surrender any points. Mm. They begin from the three. The Bills showing a five-man front and trying to give them some breathing room is Pete Little for a gain of a couple. Bruce Smith in on the tackle. A very effective running game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. After two games, Pegram is averaging 5.8 yards per carry. Bettis is averaging almost five at 4.9. So when you see numbers like those, you know the five guys up front and throw in the tight end and the lead back are doing a whale of a job. They are knocking people off the ball. Pegram with three carries for 14 yards already out of a double tight end here. A roll by Tom Zack, and he floats one incomplete off the fingertips of Bruner, covered by the linebacker Rogers, and it will be third down and eight from the five. Good throw by Tom Zack. Rogers had good position on Bruner, and it was a pass that Bruner should have caught. 
Well, Henry Jones came on the blitz and almost looked like Tom Zach scared him rolling out that way. Henry stopped. I think he could have gotten a lot closer to Mike Tomzak if he wouldn't have stuttered stepped on the blitz. A good call by Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator of Buffalo. There he is, the former Bronco head coach. He was head coach of the Saints for four games yeah. back in 85, I think. Third down and eight as Tomzak throws, and the catch is made by Andre Hastings who is out of bounds very close to a first Whoa. down. The line judge says not close enough. Charles Johnson trying to help out with the spot. Oh, Tom Zach is <laughs> over there saying no, and Hastings over there also complaining. Uh, line judge Larry Upson right there to spot it and make it fourth down and inches. He'll be the judge. Oh, Good there one. it is on the line. Looks to be an absolutely perfect spot by the officials. Now, Josh Miller, who won the job in training camp out of the University of Arizona to punt. Russell Copeland to run it back. No snap, and the left-footed Miller. It's a good way to lose it. Not a very good kick as it's out of bounds at the 41. So the Bills take over on the plus side of the 50 with 10-10 to go in a scoreless first quarter. sliding doors on both sides were brought to you courtesy of Dodge Caravan. Just as original as the original. For the very best in home entertainment, the place to go is Circuit City, where right now this RCA digital satellite system is just $199.97 after $200 cash back from DirecTV. Just sign up for one year of DirecTV's Total Choice programming and the RCA DSS system is yours for only $199.97. Get more movies, more sports, more news, more channels than cable. Plus, get coupons worth over $200 from USSB when you buy any DSS system. Hurry into Circuit City today. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. Rogaine? Don't you need a prescription? Not anymore. How's it work? Rogaine goes to the root of your hair and for some people gets it to grow. What have you got to lose? Nothing, I guess. Except more hair. That's been easy to use. <laughs> and it's starting to work. See, there's room for growth in every relationship. Rogaine. Medically proven to regrow hair. I'm Keith Ranford. And I'm Kathleen Layton. We hope you're enjoying the Bills game. And when you get home tomorrow, make sure you watch Eyewitness News at 5. College football is Saturday on ABC in the East and Central time zones. Notre Dame, Texas begins things. Then those games, regional action beginning at 3.30 Eastern. Number 8, Michigan, you saw that. I saw that in Oregon and Washington State on the West Coast only Saturday at 4 Pacific. Buffalo at the 41-yard line begins this drive. And Thurman Thomas seeks room outside, doesn't find any. Jerry Olsavsky, the eighth-year linebacker who played his college ball right here in Pittsburgh, makes the tackle. Buffalo going against this. It's not a hurry-up offense. They call the play at the line of scrimmage. Kelly has the option to call the plays on his own. But Buffalo going with the nickel defense. Five DGs in there. On second down and eight, with Thomas staying in the block, and a flag is thrown as Kelly gets blindsided and sacked. Chad Brown may be called for a face mask here. Referee tonight is except Larry that, Nimmers. Except that flag went down before the before the tackle. Illegal use of hands. Illegal hands to the face on the defense number 76. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first. Oh, that's a killer. That really hurts. Keevan Henry, the defensive end, flagged for that. Buffalo has just got nothing going at all here offensively, and now they get a first down, their first one of the game, through a penalty. First and 10 from the 34-yard line, and Thomas has blocking, but the Steelers do a great job penetrating. LeVon Kirkland knifes his way through and stops him after a minimal gain, and Dick LeBeau has really had to 
juggle the chess pieces because of all of the injuries. Well, when you lose really their best defensive lineman and Ray Seal, who had rotator cuff surgery, their best linebacker and Greg Lloyd, a lot to lose early. Second and nine. Pressure on Kelly and the pass incomplete and good coverage in the secondary. The pass intended for the veteran Andre Reed now in his 12th season. They knew they were losing Kevin Green to free agency. Uh, Jason Gilden was going to take his place. There's a, a good look at Greg Lloyd, the All-Pro, on the sideline trying to cheer on his team in this crowd. He is a real man and a real player. Third and nine. Nine minutes to go in the scoreless first quarter, and Thomas on the draw. Good ball. First down to the 21-yard line, tackled there by Woodson. So the Pittsburgh defense aggressive, and they call the draw, and Marv Levy sees it work for a 13-yard pickup. Good call, anticipating a blitz. Buffalo has seen so much blitzing from the Giants, who were very successful with it. New England, here it comes. So they go with the draw. Easy block and a big opening for Thurman Thomas. Wonderful block by Kent Hall, number 67, the All-Pro center. Thomas's longest carry of this young season, and the Steelers take a timeout. Rod Woodson calls it. So timeout, first down, Buffalo, and we come back. 8.31 to go in the quarter. Nothing, nothing. Visa takes you inside the numbers. Visa is everywhere you want to be. Last year, the Buffalo Bills ranked first in the NFL with 49 sacks. How are they doing this season? Stay tuned for the answer. The legendary chalice of Malta has never come cheap. In 1238, it was captured by 10,000 Celts. In 1512, it took an entire armada. And in 1703, it took an arranged marriage to the daughter of Charles V the older one but luckily if you want the golden chalice of malta all you need is the golden card of visa with extraordinary purchase power for extraordinary things oh. it's even mightier than the sword visa gold fits everywhere you want to be with nine sacks in their first two games the buffalo bills are on a torrid pace that could see them tie the nfl single season record of 72 sacks <laughs> Prudential has helped protect and support families for over 120 years. With the largest capital base of any life insurance company in America. We've always been there for families, paying over 85 million claims. Today, Prudential touches one out of every five people in America. People think we have quite a history, but all we've ever really done is help ensure the future. The Rock. We've been there. We'll be there. Top 10 teams take the field. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame head deep into the heart of Texas to battle the Longhorns. It's game one of an ABC college football doubleheader Saturday. Well, Rod Woodson very alertly counted heads before that snap, realized that they only had 10 players called a timeout. There's Deion Figures, number 21, gets out onto the field a little bit late. A smart move by Woodson to realize they're a man short. First down, Buffalo with the 21, no score. Eight and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Thomas. And Thurman gets inside the 15 and is run out of bounds. Tackled by LeVon Kirkland with about the 13-yard line. Thurman Thomas. Now at the age of 30, ninth season with the Buffalo Bills. Playing a little less these days. They're trying to work Derek Holmes into the lineup and give Thomas more of a breather but none so far he is tackled as he takes the handoff there by Chad Brown just shy of a first down you know Al I talked right away about the averages that Pegram and Bettis have for the Steelers on the other hand you have Thurman Thomas who coming into this game is only rushing for a two and a half yard average and as you can see early in his career 4.6 right. which is terrific but since 1993 3.69 below average and coming into today for the first two games of this year 2.5 yards mm -hmm. per turn. Uh, of course he was running behind house ballard will wolford and different offensive line and he's out and holmes is in on third and two and kelly buying time goes to the corner of the end zone and incomplete broken up in the end zone by willie williams intended for the rookie eric molds 
their first round pick out of Mississippi State. And Keevan Henry put the pressure on as the throw was made. Yeah, that's good coverage all around on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got a little bit of pressure on Kelly, but just good coverage. He had nowhere to put it. He tried to squeeze one into the end zone, but it was fine coverage by Williams. You wonder about Kelly's arm. Don't wonder anymore. Off balance, he just fired this sucker. <laughs> this is a 31-yard attempt by Steve Christie. And so Josh Miller's 29-yard punt gives Buffalo good field position, and they cash in for three on the 31-yarder by Christie. Seven and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter as Buffalo takes the early lead. No state. And he gets tackled up at the 25-yard line. And let's get a word from... Chris Berman on a breaking story. Chris? All right, Al, thank you very much. History in baseball tonight. Paul Molitor, the Twins, the 21st player to amass his 3,000th hit in the fifth inning at Kansas City. This one goes to right center field. He's already singled in the first, and this is Molitor's style. He doesn't stop at first or second. He goes to third. The first player ever to amass his 3,000th hit with a triple or a home run. Al, he's 40 years old. He leads the majors in hits. Amazing, and congratulations. All right, thank you, Chris. And so Molitor and his ex-teammate, his longtime teammate with the Brewers, Robin Young, each with 3,000 as the pass is nearly picked off by Kurt Scholes on first down. And Kurt Scholes would have had an easy six. Oh, and he was thinking six, too. He felt he should have had it. He's the leading interceptor from a year ago. It's a good read from back there. The one thing Tom Zach will do, he will lock on to a receiver with his eyes and Scholes is reading it all the way, and he's moving right there. I'm not sure he'll have an easier opportunity all year than that. Poorly thrown. Colossal break for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That, that's a walk into the end zone. Jerome Bettis in the game, so Peter out after two series, and the big back is in, and the big back has the ball, and the X-Ran, who rambled for over 100 last week, off to a good start tonight, up to the 37-yard line. Tackled by Scholes and Spielman. Well, Buffalo is... They are lucky it wasn't for a lot more. They came with the blitz, and when you blitz and you can pop that line of scrimmage with the run, you can get big yardage out of it. And, and Bettis almost broke this for a lot more. Wade Phillips sending a lot of blitzes here in the early going. 6.45 left in the quarter, 3 nothing Buffalo. First down for Pittsburgh against the 36-yard line. And it's Bettis again. And what a difference he can make. You know, the Steelers have had such bad luck with their running backs. Remember, Tim Worley was going to be the guy, and then Barry Foster was going to be the guy, and then Bam Morris was going to be the guy, mainly because of off-field problems. They're all gone, and now it's Bettis. And what they have uh, in Bettis, as you see, 116 yards last week, is a guy who, who came over from the Rams who has never experienced uh, running behind a line that is capable as a Steeler offensive line. There's Eric Egram. But Jerome Bettis uses the term, I feel like I'm running downhill. He's a running back with a wonderful attitude and a wonderful line in front of him. A lethal combination. Cordell Stewart was the man in motion. The pass is a little high and good coverage there. Charles Johnson, the intended receiver, and Thomas Smith is there to break it up. It'll be third and seven. When you think how cheaply they got Bettis from the Rams, they got to give up a second this year and a fourth in 97. And this is a guy that three years ago, what, maybe about 1,400 yards? He hasn't been hurt. A little ankle problem a year ago, and he's more than anything, he is a good kind of a football player to have on your team. He, he and Pegram really complement each other. They really are not fighting over the job. They just are really a good complement to each other. Now Cordell Stewart comes into the, the game as he is coming to the bottom of the screen and takes a swing pass from Tom Zach, and with some nifty running, Cordell Stewart is inside the 30-yard line inside the 20 and gets all the way down to the 12 yard line well he is exciting well as an offensive coordinator it's what you dream of when you call that play a blitz to that same side there's chan gailey with the baseball hat on but he got a blitz to the side of cordell stewart frank that sets it all up so give tom zack a little credit too he knew the blitz was coming he had to wait to cordell Gave him the look, see, he got behind the blockers in front of him, and then he just shows you what a superb athlete he is. He's a good, he is a slash. He can run the ball, he can pass the ball, and he's a good receiver. Pittsburgh's longest play of the season, Dawson and Wolford set up that run with great blocking from the 
15-yard line. A little swing pass to Bettis with some blocking. And Bettis loses the football, but out of bounds. And if you're going to fumble, that's where you need to fumble it, inside the five-yard line. Well, Bettis will take a look at that this coming week. Know that had he broken that back inside at the five, he probably would have been in the end zone easily. Well, Gailey and Wade Phillips are playing a little chess game here, and right now Gailey is hitting Phillips right across the bridge of the nose because, again, he calls the play to the side where the rush comes. And Wade Phillips is, is sending guys after the quarterback, but unfortunately, Gailey's countering by coming right at that blitz. Both these defenses tonight, Dan, are high-risk yep. defenses that can give up big plays. Now you've got Stewart in the game at quarterback. Tom Zack comes out. This is what Cower likes to do when they get down inside the five-yard line. It's Stewart. Oh, he can run. He can throw. Yep. He can do anything. The defense with a million things to think about. It's second down at a yard and a half, and it's a quarterback draw for a first down to the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal. A well, counter move, and then he goes through the line. He can do a lot of things. Well, that's what sets it up. That's what sets it up is the counter step by Stewart. Here's the Coca-Cola red zone fact. The Bills tonight, their opponents, have been inside the red zone, inside the 20, six times in the first two games, but they've not allowed a touchdown from inside the 20. They're in jeopardy of having that. I say, good thing you got that right in now. when you did. Absolutely. First and goal from the one. Stewart to Bettis. Touchdown. Well, that's a fine-looking series of plays. I'm going to give a defensive coordinator, Dan, a lot to think about. Well, there was an uncontested touchdown. That Buffalo up front almost looked like that was going to be a foregone conclusion that Jerome Bettis was going to find his way into the end zone. He wasn't touched by a Buffalo Bill until there's a collision about two yards in the end zone. Excellent blocking up front. Dermati Dawson, Stye, Strelzik at right tackle. You don't want defensive no. backs meeting Bettis in the hole. No. Henry Jones is left to try to tackle Bettis after it's already over. And North Whoa. Jackson hits the upright, so a flag goes down. And that did not carry him through. Mm -mm. It's no good pending the call, and he'll get another chance. And Marv Levy with a look of a coach who has seen very little go right in the last couple of minutes. His team giving up a 75-yard drive. And Marv can be colorful in oh, situations like this. He may have a master's from Harvard, but moving he's, on the right side, you see it right there. He's got a Ph.D. from the Navy. Yes, he, can, he, does. He, can, he can do it <laughs> like Outside. a sailor. <laughs> Defense, nose tackle, is in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. We try the kick. And don't send me any letters, you Navy guys. I'm just <laughs> making a reference. <laughs> Barb can let it loose. And uh, Johnson atones after the penalty. And the Steelers take the lead with 3.55 to go in the quarter. It's now Pittsburgh 7, Buffalo 3. shot of three rivers stadium since 1970 the home of the Steelers and the Pittsburgh Pirates and a brand new carpet this year players like it a lot better the old one was worn out but it can get slick if it rains and there is some rain in the forecast tonight it was a little rain earlier on too and now they were concerned about it they were slipping out there when they were working out Norm Johnson to put it in the air with Pittsburgh leading 7-3. to three, And the kick comes down to the 8-yard line. And this is Eric Moles, their number one draft choice at a Mississippi State. And a nice run Good. back up to the 38-yard line. He's tackled there by Myron Bell. Well, we've come upon an early season beauty for next week. How about going to Indianapolis where the Dolphins and the Colts match up on Monday Night Football next week. The Dolphins 3-0. And the Colts, after that tremendous win against Dallas, 3-0, the Dome will be rocking next Monday. Even this early in the season, I'm looking, you know, from uh, before the season began, you would have never thought that. Well, mm -mm. get that horseradish ready at St. Elmo's. 
Not too much of it, though. No. From the 37-yard line, Kelly sets up the screen. It's Thomas. And he's tackled up at the 43. Good tackle by Jerry Olsaski around the ankles with three and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Maybe the hardest play offensively to get the timing down is a middle screen. And that was well executed. But every middle screen, right before it happens, looks chaotic. And it looks like it's a recipe for disaster. Well done by the Bills. Second and four. That was Kelly's first completion on his fourth attempt of the night. And Thurman Thomas with a flag coming in at the end of the play, gets up to the 44-yard line. And it's a hold against Buffalo. Marv not at all happy. Holding, offense number 84, 10-yard penalty, receive second down. The, the Steelers looking over, the question is, do you want a third and three or a second and about 15? And that's the option they have, and they will march off the 10. It's a, it's a curious little call in, in, in a game like this at this point. Well, that would have been a five-yarder. I think you would have been different. 10, you almost have to take it. Second down and 14 from the 33-yard line. And the catch is made by the tight end, Lonnie Johnson, up at the 36-yard line. He's tackled there by Rod Woodson. And this Steeler defense is really picking up the momentum, getting it from the offense following that last drive. They came back out on the field and they were smoking. They just they have love such, to play here. Oh, that's that was going to be my point, Frank. They have such tremendous confidence playing here at home. They, they just draw the energy out of this crowd. You can hear them in the background. Third down and 11 from the 36-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Kelly hangs in the pocket. The protection is good and the throw, though, is out of bounds. Eric Moles, the intended receiver. Could he have caught that and stayed in? Mm. That's hard to tell from that angle right there. It was close. Kelly wanted to deliver that ball a lot earlier than that. Moles just didn't make his break to the outside. Kelly knew that he was in trouble with the blitz. I think he could have caught it. I think you're right. Yeah. That may be a case where Moles was preoccupied with mm -hmm. where the sidelines were yeah. and lost concentration on the football. Yeah, well, they think he's a great one, though. Sensing, the, draft pick. sensing the chalk. As Moore floats one and angles it and it's inside the 20 yard line and they'll spot it so they're just about at the 20 and that's where they'll put it with two minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the opening quarter the Pittsburgh Steelers the defending AFC champion second year in a row a big big injury on opening day last year it was Woodson and they were able to overcome that this year Lloyd and Bill, you have to love Bill Cower. Bill Cower not letting the team go south early on. And as Bill likes to point out, you know, the Super Bowl, it's four and a half months away. Four yeah. and a half months. You know, and he made a, a gutsy move, too. After uh, Jim Miller, the opening day starter, quarterback, couldn't get anything happen. He came back to Tom Zeck, said, you're my starter. Changed last week. Got a win out of it and made this Steeler offensive team still be happy about it. Here's Bettis. It's one thing, though, to have injuries, and, and you know the guys are going to be back in a little bit. They lost two key guys that aren't going to be back for the entire year. Mm -hmm. Let's get a word from Lynn Swan. Lynn? Al, during the pregame warm-up, the Buffalo coaches was, were looking at this new artificial surface, and they thought it was unusually slippery. And in the course of the ball game, Thurman Thomas, at one point, came up the line, wanted to make a cut, but he looked like he was just sliding flat-footed on it. The receiver mm. fell down for the Buffalo Bills, trying to make a cut to the outside and the rain is not falling at the moment. It's going to be mm -hmm. a problem if more rain comes. Mm -hmm. Good illustration right there. They were concerned about it early before the game. Second and six, Tom Zack throws, and it's complete, and a little slippage right there as Andre Hastings couldn't get his footing, otherwise he might have had the first down. It would be third and one tackled by Pop. Timely report, Lynn. Buffalo, though, a turf team. They have artificial surface at uh, their home field of Rich Stadium in Buffalo. So no, no weather up there, though, Dan. <laughs> no, it never rains or anything up there. Frank, why do you why do you lead me into <laughs> trouble like that? Because huh? <laughs> you handle it so well. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not going to Buffalo this year. Right? Cordell Stewart comes in at quarterback now on third down and a short one. He puts on his quarterback helmet with the speaker to get the play call and he gives it to Bettis and that's a good man to give it to on a third and one. Yeah, it's an interesting situation they have with Cordell Stewart. He's a great young man and I don't care if you're the quarterback. Quarterbacks have egos I, and 
I asked Mike Tomczak last night, I said, how did it feel to drive all the way down, get inside the five-yard line, and you come out? And he kind of smiled. He said, it's all right. But you just kind of wonder. You come out on critical situations, third in uh, critical situations, and I, I, that's kind of tough for a lot of quarterbacks. I think Mike's been in the uh, league for 12 years, and he has uh, developed a maturity and appreciation for just still being here. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine Jim Kelly doing that? No chance. First and 10 at the 33, waning seconds of the quarter. Steelers leading 7-3. to three. Tom Zach throws off his back foot and incomplete, intended for the rookie from Fresno State, Jaheen Arnold, with 17 seconds remaining. And, you know, guys, the, the AFC with no real clear-cut favorite this year, and, you know, these two teams and Indianapolis and Miami and Kansas City and, and now Denver, I mean, at this point, shake them up. Let the uh, the dice fall where they may. You know, Cowher had an interesting thought when we talked with him last night. He said, you just got to stay in there for the first few weeks. Then you got to get a long run. Then you have to stay healthy. And you're going to wind up there. They've just already lost key people for the entire year. They almost don't have any more mistakes left. You wonder how many more key people could the Steelers afford to lose. Second down and 10. And they set up the screen. Not a pretty screen, but a very effective one. As Bettis goes out of bounds, but not until he picks up the first down with nine seconds left in the period. A 12-yard game. You mentioned all those teams in the AFC, Al. Uh, uh, if I had to pick one right now who's playing the best football, I think it's probably the Kansas City mm -hmm. Chiefs. Yep. Road win yesterday at Seattle. We'll have Kansas City against Pittsburgh, in fact, in three weeks. Bettison again. I'll yep. say what a cheap second round and fourth round draft pick he was for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's the end of the first quarter. Pittsburgh and a smiling tower on top 7-3 to three. and Monday Night Football returns after this message of the word from our ABC station. NFL season. We're in Pittsburgh. Al Michaels with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan. We start the second quarter. First and 10 for the Steelers from their own 45. Pittsburgh up 7-3. to three. Eric Pegram in the backfield. And it's Pegram with the ball and runs right into the Left side of the Buffalo front, Ted Washington leading the way, along with Sam Rogers. And let's take a look at the numbers through the first 15 minutes of competition. Well, the Steelers are going to be very happy that Buffalo didn't have a chance to get into that end zone a couple of times. They had good possession inside Steeler territory and only came away with three points. That, that had to hurt. Yep. Only nine yards passing for Buffalo and 97 for Pittsburgh, about half of those on that one pass to Cordell Stewart. Second down and nine from the 46. Pegram, good spin move, and across midfield, tackled at the Buffalo 48. It will be third and three. Ted Washington on the stop. No, but it doesn't bode well for Buffalo if Jim Kelly is losing in a passing duel to Mike Thompson. That's, that's not what Buffalo needs to have happen to win this ballgame. Steelers checking with four wides now. And Cordell Stewart, one of those. They slot him to the right. Actually, we're actually in there with five wides. Yep. No tight ends, five wide receivers. Good time to blitz. And then they put Holiday in the backfield and keep him in the block. And on third and three, the pass is incomplete. Intended for Hastings, covered by Jones. And the punting unit comes in. What did Marv Levy tell us yesterday? We we have a Cordell Stewart period. We added this 15-minute period to practice every day this week where we just try to work on every conceivable situation where Stewart might be, whether it be quarterback, wide receiver, running back. There, let's face it, that doesn't happen to every player in the league where your opponent devotes an entire period to your skills. I think it'll maybe a Deion Sanders period, wouldn't you think? Josh Short Miller. Period. <laughs> yeah, Josh Miller with a high floating and very short kick. A fair catch is called for and made by Russell Copeland at the 30. And the Blues cascade down upon Miller, who's had two bad punts. Ooh. That one, 19 yards. Josh. Print is home base not far from Pittsburgh, just across the Ohio border. The Goodyear blip. Floating high above Three Rivers Stadium. The 13-26 to the half. Buffalo has the ball. They trail by four. And Andre Reed makes his first catch of the night up at the 37. Tackled by Willie Williams. Andre Reed in his 12th season out of Kutztown State, a Pennsylvania school. A reminder, tomorrow night, 
Roseanne, life's work, home improvement. Spin City with Michael J. Fox, a great show on High Incident, a brand new show, which you'll see tomorrow night. It's regular night will be Thursday, starring Blair Underwood right here on ABC. As Thurman Thomas on second and short gets wrapped up for a loss by LeBron Kirkland as Greg Lloyd looks on approvingly. Kirkland goes about 270. He is a big linebacker, but he's really matured this year and is a really fine run stuffer. Watch this. He just comes down the line of scrimmage and turns right into Thomas. Thomas turns up field and boom, there it is. Third down and four. Kelly throws and it is picked off at the 42. That's Jerry Osaski and a lateral to Rod Woodson. Ran an interception back for a touchdown last week and he takes it to the 24-yard line. Risky move by Alsofsky. Boy, but Jim Kelly with flawless protection and a clear line of sight right up the middle of the field. You wonder why he chose to throw it. Jim Kelly was didn't appear to be blocked. He had good protection. He wasn't rushed. Look at the line of sight right up the middle of the field. And he throws it right to Osalski, trying to get it to Eric Moulds, the rookie. I think the Steelers are really messing up their defense well. They made that look like a blitz, but they dropped out of it. Osaski having a big half. His eighth year is his first regular season interception. First and ten at the 24-yard line. Keegrum, big hole through the middle, takes it down to the 15, where it'll be second and a one. Uh, this is where Keegrum and Bettis really complement themselves. Well, outside the 20, Keegrum is so swift, so quick. Buffalo right now ought to sense what's happening to them. We talked at the top of the show about Pittsburgh and their dominance here at Three Rivers and especially their dominance over the Bills. A 7-3 ball game right here, second quarter. Buffalo backed up to their own end zone. It's time to step up. Second and one. Pegram escapes a would-be tackle by Spielman and then Smith is there to back up Chris and it will be third down and one. Pretty good step up. Spielman just reads that thing perfectly. Scrapes right into the hole. Just doesn't make the tackle. Right where he has to be. Upfield. Of course, he delays the play enough where his teammates come in and make the tackle. But Spielman and every guy on that Buffalo defensive huddle, they need to step to the line and be counted right now. Pittsburgh stuffs it, uh, this one into the end zone. They're in trouble. Third and one. Stewart's the quarterback. Bettis in the backfield, and Stewart on that counter move again, and it's going to be very close at the 14-yard line. Hit hard by Spielman. Well, you know why he's in there, though. What a great athletic move he made. He spun back into the inside when he most certainly would have not got the first down. He came with that spin very close to getting it. Good job by the Buffalo defense with the whole flow going one way and then the counter and the move to the right side by Stewart. What's this move now? He'll spin back to the inside here. Right there is where he got it. Just a little extra effort and not a whole lot of quarterbacks have that athleticism. Wade Phillips with the look of a man who's going to have a long night. And it's a first down. A good effort there by everybody involved. By the Buffalo defense who tagged Stewart three times and of course by Cordell Stewart with a great individual effort. And Stewart stays on. That wide receiver this time. Wonder if he can play cornerback. <laughs> well, they go with Pegram at the running back position this time. Bettis comes out. A split back set on first down from the 14-yard line. They put Hastings in motion. A little short drop, and then they give it to Stewart, and that's beautifully read by Bryce Pop and Bruce Smith. Whew. And that's part of the reason Bryce Pop won the several awards as uh, the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year last year. It's an 11-yard loss. So quick out there, 17 and a half sacks. Also good against the run. Bruce Smith not getting a lot of calls, but then again, Bruce Smith always draws a crowd wherever he is. It's just all the upfield rush by the Bills. They were making, you know, they were operating five, six yards in the Steeler backfield. Stewart had no chance whatsoever. Second and 21. Stewart in motion. 
Tom Zack floats one into the arms of Bettis. And then Pop runs him out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. They'll be 10-yard uh, shy of the first down. We mentioned Pop winning uh, several of those defensive player of the year awards. The reason I say several, there is no such thing as like an official award. Like in baseball, there's an official MVP award. But in the NFL, you have several organizations who give the same award. And he did win several of them. Look at Bettis turning on the speed down the sidelines. And he has a lot of oh, speed for a big guy that weighs 250 pounds. So quick. Third down, 10 at the 14, 921 to go in the half. Four wide. And on a draw, on an inside give it is Eric Pedro. So a little bit of a moral win here for the Buffalo Bills as they hold him to a field goal attempt. That's Jim Jeffcoat, the longtime Dallas Cowboy, ending his career now with the Buffalo Bills making the tackle. Buffalo needed that badly. So did we. Now Norm Johnson out of a Josh Miller hole. Johnson, the longtime Seattle Seahawk, who had a great year last year here with Pittsburgh, replacing Gary Anderson and moved to Philadelphia. This is a 30-yard field goal attempt by Johnson. And he makes it to extend the lead for seven. 35 left in the hand. Pittsburgh 10. Buffalo three. Here on ABC, it's regular time slot Thursdays at eight. Blair Underwood uh, used to be with L.A. Law and now the star of High Incident and the guy right at home in Pittsburgh because he went to school at Carnegie Mellon. Also with Regent Guppy this morning in New York. Yes, he gets he around. Man moves around and he's looking on here in Pittsburgh with the Steelers. Up on top, 10-3, to three, and Norm Johnson sending the kickoff into the arms of Eric Moles at the six-yard line, and the Mississippi State rookie brings it back up to the 35. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Slate Dress Pants. You know those pants that never fumble? These are those pants. Lincoln Mercury in the complete line of 1996 Lincoln and Mercury automobiles, and Miller Lite, and you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite. Life is good. The Golden Triangle. The Allegheny and the Mahangahela converging to form the Ohio Three River Stadium. Buffalo at the 35-yard line, down by seven. Lead in motion. Thurman Thomas behind Tim Tyndale. And runs out of bounds after a gain of eight up at the 43. Buffalo needs their Golden Triangle to come through right now. Reed, Thomas, and Kelly. Mm -hmm. The Bills, as you can see, nine consecutive wins in games where they've been decided by seven or fewer, one shy of the NFL record. So I think that's a sign of a veteran coach and a veteran-laden mm -hmm. team. They know how to handle the pressure-packed, close situation. Seven of them last year and two thus far this season. Second and a deuce, and it's Thurman Thomas picking up the first down and then shouldering his way up to the 48-yard line where he's tackled by Willie Williams. They're one shy of that streak, as Dan mentioned, and the teams that... Uh, Who were those today? Well, Dan, do we have any idea? I, I believe you should. Ta-da! Soon to come into view. There it is. Cleveland 71 through 73, and the St. Louis Cardinals in 75 and 6. Steve Hurt wanted a drum roll, I think. <laughs> Dan wanted a drum roll. Uh, this is Tim Tim Tindale for a gain of three. We must admit the St. Louis Cardinals <laughs> aren't exactly... Uh, littering the uh, NFL record book no. with a lot of stats in there. Interesting we'll take whatever we can get. Interesting way the Buffalo Bills call their plays. Jim Kelly has the option to call anything he wants on his own when he wants to get help from the sidelines. He looks for this man, Jim Schaffner, but he makes the call. Second and seven. And this time it is Derek Holmes to about the 46-yard line. Holmes in his second year, kid out of Portland State who figures to spell Thomas more and more as the season goes on to try to keep Thurman healthy, and Holmes a pretty good back in his own right. And Kelly did look to the bench. Jim Schaffner, you saw, gave him the call. But I'll tell you one thing about what's happening right now. The Pittsburgh Steelers are playing eight guys up on that line. They're not respecting the Buffalo passing game. Carnell Lake is making tackles at the line and in the backfield. Third and four. They blitz. It's picked up, and Kelly slings it into a lot of traffic and is able to jam it in 
for a first down to the 34-yard line into the arms of Quinn Early, his first catch of the night. Early, the free agent pickup from the New Orleans Saints, and uh, picked up the uh, reception for the winning touchdown last week against New England. The proper verb, Al, he did jam it in. Kelly waited and waited. Tight spiral, it had to be perfect, it was. Kelly from the 34 on first down. Kelly going deep over the middle, and it is picked off by LaVon Kirkland. A tremendous interception for a linebacker intended for Lonnie Johnson. Willie Mays would have been proud of that catch. <laughs> Talk about over the shoulder. I told you how big he is. He was about 270 pounds. He one hands it. He's really come into his own this year. Kelly thought he had six. Running Dead. completely away from it. Bingo. They splash into Indy to battle the Colts. Next week on ABC's Monday Night Football. Kind of classic coverage. You got underneath by the linebacker. Deep coverage from the secondary on the tight end. Lonnie Johnson, it was a terrific play by the big man, Levon Kirkland. That's his second interception of the season, fourth of his career. The Steelers start from the three, and Bettis gives him a lot of breathing room as he takes it up to the 11-yard line. Mike Tomzak has been around a long time. He played with the Bears in the 85 Super Bowl. In fact, got into that game. Bears killed New England. And Jim McMahon got a breather at the end, and then... Mike uh, with Chicago, a sometime starter there. The Cleveland, the Green, there's the starter at the beginning of this season in Jacksonville, Jim Miller, with Stewart on the depth chart as number three. Mike and his, Mike Tomzak in his 12th season on second and two, and it's Bettis who gets hit behind the line of scrimmage and stops for no gain. Henry Jones is there. Mike in his career, I'll tell you, he is a primetime player. 21 and 10 in Chicago, then under 500 at Cleveland, 500 or under 500 at Green Bay, 500 at Cleveland, five and three here. Tom Zack, eight for 13 tonight. This is the 54th start of his career. Nine of them have been on Monday Night Football. Third down and three from the 11-yard line. And Tom Zach throws, and a great catch is made as he guns it into the arms of Charles Johnson for a first down at the 20. Marlon Kerner with the coverage. Charles Johnson with a fine catch for the first down. They really expect him to step up. We mentioned earlier, Yancey Thigpen is gone for they don't know how long. Ernie Mills, the same problem. He has a knee injury, so they expect big things. Watch Bruce Smith and how quickly he is all over Mike Tom Zach. He just blows. He gets by Dawson in a hurry. That's a Pro Bowl center there. Sure is. That's one of the best offensive linemen in the game. Germani Dawson. Bruce Smith gives him a complete whiff job and buries Tom Zack. From the 21-yard line, Tom Zack throws, goes the other way, and checks off to Charles Johnson. And he picks up about five. Thomas Smith there on the tackle with under four minutes to go in the half. Good and protection for Tom Zack. Excuse me. I'll get protection for Tom Zack. He is... Had a chance to make a couple of reads and then come back to Charles Johnson. They're moving Bruce Smith around. Well, it's asking a lot of a center to snap the ball. When you snap the ball, you have a soft shoulder because your arm is up in your midsection. Asking him to go one-on-one -on -one against Smith is asking a lot. Johnson comes out of the game, injured his arm, as Bettis rams his way up to the 41-yard line. You can... You can just almost cash this check that if he stays healthy and not a lot happens to this offensive line in front of him, that, that Jerome Bettis is going to have a monster year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that means they'll have a monster year. This man is such an imposing physical player. Look at the legs churning at 250 pounds. He just drives for so many extra yards after the initial hit. First and 10 from the 41. Here he goes again. Boom, up to the 46-yard line. The, the black shirt was not going backwards there. It is the white shirt and the pile that are moving backwards. I mentioned those couple of thousand-yard seasons he had with the Rams when he had a pretty good offensive line in front of him. Little ankle problem a year ago. 
Well, he is a big plus. What a wonderful change of pace for Tower, though. You have Bettis, and you go back to Pegram, then you bring this guy back in again. And they get along. Yep, and then you have Cordell Stewart. And Stewart. Second down and five from the 46-yard line as we approach the two-minute warning. Tom Zach throws. Hastings makes the catch. Good move to pick up the first down and extra yardage, and he's out of bounds at the 43-yard line, breaking a Henry Jones tackle along the way. Uh, Henry Jones whiff along the way. Jones yeah. thought he was going to bury him. Hastings, with a quick move to the inside, just completely juked him. Uh, Henry Jones assumed that he was going to step out of bounds. Two-minute warning. Oh. Bangs his way inside the 30-yard line. He's loose, and Jerome Bennett scores for the Steelers. That is a back-breaking drive by the Steelers that started at their own four-yard line. And Jerome was indeed running downhill. Yes, sir. And over people in the process. What a great effort. He's happy to be here. Watch this. This is classic. Covering up the football in the traffic. Bowling over would-be tacklers. They'll hear about that. Scholes and Henry Jones. And not a stellar series for Henry Jones, was it? Two missed tackles where he fails to wrap up. Strelzik at right tackle. Stai at right guard. Dawson at center. Norm Johnson just does boot it through. That's... That is his longest run since his rookie year. And he already has 90 yards on the ground tonight. Explode into your secondary. But when he does, your two safeties have to make the tackle. And in that instance right there, Kurt Schultz and Henry Jones, the two safeties for the Bills, just bounce off of Jerome Bettis like... He's made of kryptonite. <laughs> Norm Johnson in the rain to kick off now. 17 to 3. The Steelers on top. And it's a short kick. Fielded up at the 15 by the rookie Eric Moles. And good coverage as he gets tackled by Lester at the 25-yard line. Tim Lester and another look at Bettis' longest run since his rookie year out of Notre Dame. Here it is. There's Schultz on the left. He's going to come in. Henry Jones will come in from the right. Right there. Both of them. Neither one wraps up. They just put a shoulder into Jerome Bettis. Guys, newsflash. No shoulder by itself is going to drop Jerome Bettis. Mm -mm. It is not going to happen. This guy brings a big load to the field. And a shoulder tackle by a safety will not drop him. First down from the 25-yard line. Kelly facing a four-man rush throws. Reed makes the catch, and it's a gain of about six as the Buffalo Bills have again dug themselves a hole as they did opening night when they trailed the Giants 17-0 and won. But tonight, a punt ends the first three and out, then a field goal, and since then, a punt and two picks. Pretty ugly. Second and four. Thurman Thomas, the inside handoff, picks up the first down up to the 37-yard line with a minute and a half to play in the half. And, Al, I think if you think back to that second drive of Buffalo's where they got a field goal, they were aided because there was a Pittsburgh sack of Kelly, and they got a first down because of the illegal use of hands that kept that drive alive, or that would have been a dead drive. From the 36-yard line, Kelly almost had it picked off by Carnell Lake and Lonnie Johnson had to do all he could to make sure Lake didn't intercept it. Kelly again trying to squeeze it in. He's been able to do it on a couple occasions, and he's had a he's had a tough two games coming into tonight, and this is just equally as bad. They were down 17 to nothing to the Giants in the first half, and the guy that got him back in that game is Andre Reed. Second and ten. Kelly to the sideline, and that's batted away. Willie Williams getting a hand there as a flag down at the line of scrimmage. They're close to it. Williams again with just fine coverage. Well, I'm, uh, Frank, did you see? Willie Williams almost looks like he's making a break on the ball before Quinn Early is. These, yeah. these guys are, the, the defensive backs uh, for Pittsburgh are, are looking like Illegal the receivers of the Buffalo. Base. Number 70 offense, 10-yard penalty, receive second down. John Fiennes says, me? 
<laughs> John Fina, who me? Oh, there it is. It's actually oh, yeah. left guard, Corbin Lucina. Mm -hmm. And no wonder John Fina yeah. is going. Yeah. John, we will uh, we will vindicate you yep. even if the officials won't. <laughs> Kelly trying to change the play, and the crowd realizes that. Second and 20 out of the gun. Bills have all of their timeouts. And Thurman Thomas on the second and 20 goes next to nowhere. Now the Steelers are called timeout. Yard line. Excuse me, Al. Steelers are called timeout. Third down and 18. Pittsburgh has two timeouts. Now they're not going to. They thought about it. They will hear, unless Buffalo picks up a first down or the clock stops on its own when an incompletion or out of bounds. Third and 18, and Kelly throws, and the catch is made at the 44, but a little short of the first down as Quinn Early makes the catch. The stick is right there, and let's see where they spot it. Willie Williams with the coverage. Boy, no pass rush at all by Pittsburgh that time. Allowed Kelly to just sit there, sit there, sit there. And then, even worse, Frank, allowed to step into the throw and really put something on it. Well, yeah, 25 seconds remaining. And it's fourth down, and they're going to go for it here. And uh, real it is closer. Thurman Thomas, and I don't I think, think he got it. Well, I, I can't tell from here. Well, it's it's hard to tell. You're right. If he doesn't, then the Steelers could run a play and try to get into field oh, I position. Think he got it. If the marker yeah. on the far side of the field is accurate, he got it. If you're going to have anyone mm -hmm. getting a first down, it's Thurman Thomas. He scoots and squeezes and finds little cracks that other backs just can't find. He, he got just it. gets it. <laughs> Never in doubt. Mm -hmm. 18 seconds, yeah. though. 18 seconds now. Bruce Smith. Well, Bruce, Bruce is Bruce, right. Bruce, Bruce is on top of it because the clock was, yeah, when the ball, ball is signaled ready for play, right. they would have started the clock. So 18 ticks remaining in the half. Buffalo with the ball, and let's check in with Chris Berman. Chris? All right, Al, thank you. While the uh, Bills try to sort things out there, coming up on our Toyota Halftime Report, we look forward to your chat with Captain Comeback of the Colts, quarterback Jim Harbaugh, and... Of course, we'll take our whip around the league, including Raiders hosting the Jaguars. Jacksonville down 10-3, three and a half minutes to go, mounting what they hope is a tying drive. Mark Brunel popped by Rob Fredrickson into the hands at number 93. The large one, Jerry Ball, 325 pounds, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. He could go all the way. The longest touchdown run ever by a man over 300 pounds. Al, he was Jerry Wrecking Ball. <laughs> And the longest touchdown by man over 330 pounds as well. What, what is Jerry these days? Uh, yeah, <laughs> 330 might be, might be on the low side. Buffalo first and 10 at its own 46-yard line. Kelly changing off, but he sees the blip forming by the Steelers. And here they come, and he guns it over the middle, and that is incomplete, intended for Russell Copeland. Both Willie was there. Kelly just didn't get it to him. Willie Williams is having some half on his on his coverages. He is all over these guys. And boy, you hate to see the blitz picked up that well by Buffalo and to come away with an incompletion. Ball kind of sailed a little bit on Kelly. Second and 14. Kelly trying to get them into field goal range. Great job by the secondary. And he dumps it off and it's Intercepted by Carnell Lake, and he will score. Oh, what a nightmare. Kelly looking downfield, looking, looking, looking. Nobody was there. Finally pulls it down, tries to dump it off, and Carnell Lake is right there. I got some advice for Buffalo. If they see a Monday night game scheduled in Pittsburgh next year, they ought to think about forfeiting the game. That's Kelly. He wants to take it deep, wants to put points on the board. Great competitor. Now he's looking for Thurman Thomas. Tries to get it. Never did see Carnell Lake. That's one of those plays. It looked like there were four white shirts and about 40 black shirts on that play. 
pressure on Kelly, the secondary, a fabulous job, then the dump off. And it was a disastrous dump off, and that is the end of the half. You got a 10, you got a 10-3 ball game, and then they give up two touchdowns in the final two minutes of the half. And the crowd is roaring with the score now 24 to 3. Chris along with halftime highlights. Jim Harbaugh joins us live from Indianapolis. We start the third quarter. Steelers coming into the game. One and one. The Bills two and oh. The Buffalo trying to dig out of a big hole is Thurman Thomas on a sweep to the left. Picks up about nine yards, and Osaski with the tackle, and a marker is down. Uh, Remembers is the official. They're almost certainly going to get the fullback, Tyndale, for holding. That would be my educated guess. You get a Masters. Well, I'm not there yet. That's just holding against Buffalo. All right, you get a, a Bachelor holding. of Arts. 33 offense. A home run. Penalty. There you go. There's your PhD. Repeat first down. <laughs> and how's that? For being down 24 to 3, and that's the way you get things started. <laughs> Marv has the look of a guy down 24 to 3, and now they get to go first and 20. Oh, Marv. Jim Kelly playing in his own personal house of horrors here, and the catch is made by Quinn Early at the 39 yard line. Nine yard gain. Perry makes the tackle. It'll be second and 11. Good read between Kelly and Quinn Early. They both picked up the blitz. Early was right there, and Kelly had enough blockers to pick it up. Derek Holmes is in the game now, spelling Thomas. And Kelly throws, and that is caught up at the 48-yard line by Tony Klein, the second-team tight end. Makes his first reception of the night. And uh, the light rain that began to fall at the end of the first half is now a little bit heavier. Almost stopped for a while there during halftime. And you're right, now it starts to come down almost harder than it has been raining all night. Again, we saw a good example. Yeah. This is a new surface, and it still is a little slick. It was slick before the game from the rain this afternoon. Third down and seven. And Kelly throws to Johnson, the tight end, and with that extra effort, picks up the first down. He had to get to the 50, and the ball comes out after the play was whistled dead at the 47-yard line. Again, a good pickup of the blitz on the part of the Bills. Well, Jim Kelly coming back to uh, the area in which he grew up, and he had that Jerry Olsaski pickoff, ending one drive. Olsaski then lateraling to Rod Woodson. And the woes continue, that LeVon Kirkland interception. And then, of course, at the end of the half, the backbreaker as Carnell Lake picks it off with seconds remaining and ends the first half with a touchdown run back. 24 to 3 at the half. Derek Holmes has picked up a couple at second down and eight at the 45-yard line. As Kelly pump fakes and then goes deep down the sideline and incomplete. And Kelly goes down in the arms of Chad Brown. Andre Reed and Rod Woodson back there. Andre Reed, uh, his Buffalo career might have been over in the offseason, uh, thinking about leaving. And then uh, they had a conference call, and Jim Kelly got on the phone with him and a couple of the other veterans, and back he comes. And he was the big turnaround man against the Giants in the season opener when they were down 17 to nothing. He caught a 60-yard touchdown pass from Kelly. Third down and seven. And Eric Moles makes the catch. The number one draft choice out of Mississippi State. Run out of bounds at the 33 by Woodson. It's a kind of a unanimous uh, opinion around the Bills organization. This youngster is going to turn into a starter and a big-time player. Only was about a 4-4, 4-5, but he has that quick speed. And they really like it. And this is about the best-looking drive that Buffalo has put together so far in this ballgame. And at a very critical time for them as Moles goes next to nowhere on a play that uh, was very slow in developing. It's an uh, interesting call. You're that moving the ball in with your standard stuff and you try to come back with something like that. If that play would have been any slower, it would have been going backwards. It looked like it was being replayed. 
Second down and ten. Here come the Steelers. The pass may have been tipped, and it wobbles into the hands of Russell Copeland, complete at the 28-yard line. Willie Williams with the coverage. Bill's doing a good job, though, picking up the blitz. Steelers, almost every other play coming with some sort of, some kind of a blitz, either a safety blitz, corner blitz. That was a superior job by Copeland of controlling a football that was high and away. Important play here because this is a very important drive. You're down by 21. They've got to get out of the blocks in the second half. Third down and five at the 28-yard line. They run a stun up front, and they give the ball to Derek Holmes on an interesting call to the 24-yard line. He's short of the first down by one. Well, that was a change on the part of Kelly. He had called something, and he changed it. He saw what he liked uh, that obviously was but he wanted to come with the draw and very close to the first. Well, the Bills down by 21. It's fourth and one, and it's the, the type of situation they have to go for. They're compelled to go for it here. Andre Reed brought something in from the sidelines and came over and talked to Kelly about it. Or did he just get in late, Dan, and have to get the ball? Fourth down in the yard, and Kelly's yeah. going to take a timeout. So yeah. That's a critical play here yeah. for them. Reed's coming in late, either with something from the bench or just being tardy. Either way, it caused some confusion in the Buffalo huddle. A foul from Paris. The yard at the 25 after the timeout. And Kelly throws, and it is Reed making the catch. What a call, because the coverage was tight, and he's able to slip a tackle and picks up the first down. The tackle he slipped is Rod Woodson. You don't often slip a Rod Woodson tackle. Woodson about probably 85, 90% that he was before the, tore his knee up a year ago in the season opener. But you're also talking about one of the best receivers who can run after the catch that has played in this league uh, for a long time in Andre Reed. Over 10,000 yeah. career receiving yards. And a lot of those babies came after the reception. Derek Holmes. Yeah flag down. I would say 8,000 of those yards came after the catch. Mm -hmm. And this one against Buffalo. Nine consecutive years over 50 receptions and that's what is produced. Holding. Yeah. Offense number 86. 10 yard penalty. That's good. The end of the run. And it's amazing well, for, for a guy who you know, really in his career has lived over the middle mainly. I mean he's, he's, he's over the middle just and say for that, 12 Al. years. I mean one of the guys that did Absolutely is fearless coming across and has done it for 12 years now. Yep. Well, the Bills have already overcome one first and 20 on this drive. Now they get to try to do it again. Not often that you do it, to do it twice on the same series, asking a great deal. Back at the 27-yard line, Kelly for the end zone, and nobody there but a couple of black shirts. Quinn Early was over in the corner of the end zone. And again, Early coming over as a, uh, a free agent from New Orleans, and he was running one pattern and Kelly throwing in another direction. And Ronda Johnson also, his tight end, pulled up on him. Johnson, I think, was the intended receiver. He just hooked up on him. There, sometimes you exaggerate the distance, but there really was not a Bills receiver within 10 or 15 yards of that ball. Early was running down the sideline, and Kelly throwing it near the uh, goal post. On second and 19, Kelly throws, and it's incomplete. Again, big time pressure that time by the nose tackle, Joel Steed. Well, you're trying to get the screen off. You got to slow those guys down a little bit to let the screen set. Trying to get the ball to Derek Holmes in the screen, and the offensive linemen have got to take a pretty good chuck on the man in front of them before they pull into that screen. They just didn't do it. They the, the, rule of thumb, the rule of thumb, Frank, is you had to stop his momentum. You had to make him come to a stop on a screen and then release. Nobody from Pittsburgh came to a stop that time. It was a uniform wave coming after Kelly. Third and 19 from the 27-yard line. This time Kelly with good protection. And the throw, a, well, Willie Williams got tangled up with Russell Copeland and no flag. The crowd held its breath for a moment. Williams just had good position. He knew Copeland had to come back to the inside. He got himself in a position where Copeland would have to fight through him. Now watch Williams. Now he'll get himself positioned inside of Copeland. Now he's looking back, checking out the ball. Now he looks back. 
and he slips there and then I, you'll never get a flag doing that it was just yeah. good positioning and Willie Williams is playing it one fine game tonight now a 45 yard attempt by Christie who made one from 31 in the first quarter and on fourth and 19 they have to opt for the field goal here after they've gone for a fourth and one earlier they settle for three and trim the lead to 24 to six Stadium breeze picking up rain coming down Buffalo has kicked a field goal to make it Pittsburgh 24 Buffalo 6 and Steve Christie's kickoff comes into the arms of Charles Johnson at the eight yard line and Johnson will pull up the left side takes it all the way up to the 39 tackled by Tim Tyndale talking about Andre Reed and a great career here's your prudential fact tonight as a battery as a pitcher catcher combination Kelly and Reed have combined for 634 completions most ever by any quarterback receiver pair in the history of the National Football League 634 times we've been able to say Kelly to Reed well, Kelly's in his 11th year after the USFL and Reed is in his 12th year they've been together 11 years first and 10 at the 39 yard line Years ago, we mentioned that uh, Marino and Clayton had combined for the most touchdowns of any pair. Young and Rice would be second. Unitas and Berry third, and then Kelly and Reed fourth most touchdowns in history as a combo. Which again illustrates the kind of workmanlike efforts that Andre Reed gives. He he does the grunt receiving. He's the guy that takes hits from linebackers and strong safeties because he does a lot of his. A lot of his work by those hash marks instead of tap dancing down a sideline. Here's Pegram taking the pitch out on second down and taking it up to the 45 yard line. Tackled there by Bruce Smith, setting up a third down and three. Stars and stripes hovering above Three River Stadium in the rain. The Goodyear Bunch stirred of Akron. Sorry, not the Stars and Stripes. <laughs> Mark Kina, our uh, captain, for a moment was uh, checking with, uh, with the airport plenty of what he was flying well at least that's a sign that the ceiling is a little bit higher mm -hmm. need at least a thousand foot ceiling to get the uh, to get the blimp up in the air third and three and that's Cordell Stewart in a shotgun to take the snap and a little flip to Andre Hastings who gets banged down at the 49 very close to the first down tackled by Kirk Scholes again that will add to the Cordell period for opponents down the down the road for the Pittsburgh Steelers again something they have to work on Stewart in the shotgun running the option the shovel pass to a wide receiver and it's a first down they are they are deep into the playbook you notice that big hit by Scholes there yeah. Dan yeah a little easier to hit Hastings than it is to hit Jerome Bettis a little redemption there on the part of Scholes First and ten from the 49-yard line. Eric Pegram takes it to the 45-yard line. So Eric with that slashing style, and he plays for a couple of series, and then the battering ram comes in, and Bill Cower has a nice little combo coming out of that backfield. Those two games he had, uh, what, back in 93, I think it was with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. One of them against the Rams. I think 180 yards or something like that. Another yep. big game of 190 yards. It just exploded onto the NFL scene. But whether it's Bettis or Pegram, the constant is Jackson, Wolford, Dawson, Stye, and Strelzik. Doesn't hurt to have the big guys. No, they're getting it done up front. Second and four, 720 left in the third. Pittsburgh leading by 18. Well, look at that. Yeah, and that's just what Dan's talking about. They just blowing them off the line now. What a surge by Pittsburgh's offensive line. The entire Buffalo defense was moving backwards. That's where that term surge comes from when you see the entire wave of an offensive line moving everybody backwards. Pittsburgh now coming with two tight ends. It bolster the offensive line that's already dominating. Steelers averaging 5.2 per rush tonight. League average annually around 4.0. So a big night on the ground. And it continues. Pegram wrestled out by Schultz, but not until he picks up the first down at the 27. This is just domination at the moment. Frank, this game's been played for many, many years, and this part of it has never changed. When you have a lead and you can 
and force your will on your opponent by running the ball down their throat when they know it's coming it is really the expression of domination it, Pittsburgh right now is expressing themselves we're kicking your butt mm -hmm. and Buffalo knows if they can't stop this they have no chance in the world of getting back into this game first and ten from the 27 yard line Pegram Hard yard in the 26, tackled there by Chris Spielman. So it's an amazing thing with the Steelers when they have the lead at the half. In their last 26 regular season games in which they've led at the half, they've won. It's the longest streak since the great Miami teams in the early 70s, including the, uh, the unbeaten 72 Dolphins squad. And they had the lead tonight by 21 at the half. Right now it's 18 encouraging for the fans of Plymouth Buffalo yeah. looking on that is in the game second and eight the fake to him and then the Tom Zach throws and Jonathan Hayes makes the catch the tight end close to a first down at the 17. Well it's a funny league the way the way things go so up and down I mean the Pittsburgh Steelers go to Jacksonville they lose to a second year team on opening day they lose Lloyd they have a quarterback controversy throughout preseason they change quarterbacks things look so bleak Come back, beat the Ravens, and tonight, I mean, they look like they're going to the Super Bowl again the way they're playing. It's, uh, I think it's the expression of a couple things, Al. One is that Bill Cower is a coach in complete control of his football team. And secondly, there is a reason this team was in the in the Super Bowl last year. They have a lot of talented players. Third in the yard, here's Bettis, and he gets cracked down before he can pick up the first down. That's a big hit and a big stop right there by Ted Washington along with Spielman. And you illustrated some key people that they lost, but they still have a lot of very, very capable talent on this football team. And Bill Cower is going to be winning football games in the NFL for a long time to come. Well, the decision there as to whether or not on fourth and a long two, whether or not they would go for the three or try to hammer it in, what they bring out the kicking team. Well, Norm Johnson could use the work. Yeah, well, Norm, <laughs> Norm Johnson has the ones he's made tonight, including the extra points he's barely made. This is a 37-yarder. Probably thrilled they don't have to punt this the way they've been punting. Yeah, he blocks. He has that one blocked. Somebody gets so it. Yeah. Kurt Schulz picks it up at the 16 and is out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Phil Hansen may have been the guy who got a hand on it. Ah, Buffalo gets a break. They need it. 4-11 left in the third. 24 to 6. Steelers. These days you're working harder than ever. You need a truck that does too. Don't move. Introducing the all-new 1997 Ford F-150. <laughs> even more horsepower and torque and all the legendary strength of an f-series if it gets to the grand canyon before we do the all-new ford f-150 a long time ago someone said i'm better than you warriors collide they meet in the air on the ground under piles enter a guy named matt suddenly players sweat more look hungrier get dirtier his raw genius is everywhere tackles become hits front lines become trenches every inch a mile every bomb atomic plays are bigger than mouths and they're barking i'm better than you and i can prove it madden nfl 97 if it's in the game ea sports it's in the game <laughs> Expiration date says. Forget expiration dates. These born on dates tell you when it was made, so you know it's fresh. So what do we do with those? Budweiser. Fresh beer tastes better. Scary, huh? Boston College meets Michigan in an interconference clash for other regional action featuring North Carolina or Washington. Part of an ABC College football doubleheader Saturday. 16th of September, the calendar says it's still summer. Well, sort of. 4-11 to go in the third. Buffalo has taken over after blocking the field goal. Kelly from the 19 begins by handing the ball to Thurman Thomas, and he takes it up to the 27-yard line. And Darren Perry 
makes the stop there. And the second down and about three upcoming. If this were January, that rain would be white and we'd be <laughs> stuck here for a week. It would be. <laughs> Second down three, 24 six. Steelers up by 18 with Reed in motion. Thurman Thomas again. And Chad Brown makes the tackle after he picks up the first down. Thurman up to the 32 yard line. If by chance, Buffalo could just keep these chains moving, put together some type of a drive without making mistakes and making it hard on themselves. Last time, two holding calls ultimately did them in. If they could. If they could just eliminate the mistakes from their offensive game, they might have a chance to, to at least attempt to crawl back into this thing. Derek Holmes in, and a little flip to Holmes, who comes out of the backfield, and Derek takes it up to the 38-yard line, and the flag comes in at the end of the play. Derek saying he got my face mask. He did, too. He saw the head pop back. Rather incriminating when that head goes snapping back like that. Uh, question five or 15. Face mask. Five yards only on the defense, number 94. The five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Mini mask. Chad Brown, number 94. To warrant five yards, you let it go. That's a good call by the official. He would have kept his hand in there and, and torqued the head around. Well, then that's, that's deserving of the 15. First down from the 43-yard line as Derek Holmes cuts it back off the right side to the 49-yard line. 2.45 left in the third. The Bills trying to scramble back. Remember, on opening night, they were down 17 zip to the Giants and won in overtime. They won last week against New England, and then next week, they go home to face Dallas. And there is a timeout on the field with Glenn Parker shaken up. The tackle for Buffalo, so an injury timeout with 2.40 left in the third. The new Ford Taurus has people talking. Road and Track says the new V6 is a high-strung engine born to gallop. Chris Hayward. Glenn Parker out of the game. Corey Lucci replaces him. Second down and five. Walked off under his own power to Parker and Derek Holmes. Takes it across the 50 as a marker down to the 49 yard line. Uh, two flags came from two separate officials. I don't know if they called the same thing or if we've got. Boy, another holding call against Buffalo. Holding. Offense number 86. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Tony Klein, the tight end. Now the Steelers are difficult to beat at home all by themselves when you compound it by consistently taking one step forwards and then two step backwards like the Buffalo Bills are tonight you're almost making the task impossible Steelers 29 and 8 under tower at Three River Stadium second down and 15 from the 38 yard line and Kelly throws and it is Reed making the catch but not for much up to the 44 yard line tackled by Woodson setting up a third down and nine and Two unbeatens have at it next Monday night as we go to Hoosier land to Indianapolis where the Colts host the Dolphins. Jimmy Johnson's team 3-0, and Lindy and Fonte's team 3-0 and next Monday night. All the undefeated teams play each other next week. Yeah, four, four matchups. Third down and eight for the 45. Here comes everybody, and they pick them up. And then Kelly throws, and the pattern was cut off at the 45-yard line to throw high. Quinn early, breaking early, fourth down. I'll tell you, when you pick up a full blitz like that, a corner blitz, safety blitz coming on from the left side, you ought to be able to make a completion out of it. You get individual coverage, of, and just compounding the errors. At the 45-yard line, Chris Moore to punt. Andre Hastings back to receive it. floating kick bouncing inside the 25 and down to the 23 yard line with a minute 15 seconds left on a frustrating night for Jim Kelly and the Bills as they trail the Steelers 24 6 
Preston's hotline. What's the problem? Man, my party is lame. I think I bought some skunky beer. Sir, relax. When was your beer born? Born? What are you talking about? It doesn't have a born on date? A what? Do you have any Budweiser? 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Pittsburgh Steelers trying to go 2-1. and one. Keevan Henry was shaken up on the last series. He gets some attention on the Pittsburgh bench. I guess they're looking at his right knee. Of course, he's in there starting because of Ray Seals out for the season. Steelers getting very thin. On the 21-yard line, Tom Zach gives the ball to Bettis, who bangs his way through the middle, tackled by Henry Jones, who piggybacks him down at the 34-yard line. Bettis having fun tonight over the 100-yard marker, getting huge openings, and when he does it, he's making the openings on his own. Bettis now 100 yards. Triple figures last week. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Bettis again. Tackled by Chris Spielman after a pickup of one. And the Steelers can now let the clock tick down if they so choose to end the third quarter. Steelers off next week. They have a bye week, and then the next play against Houston, the surprising Oilers of two and one. They'll come here in two weeks. Spielman yes. gives you an idea how it, what it's like to hit Bennis. He lost his helmet in the process. <laughs> glassy eyed there also. Well, if you don't, if you don't like Chris Spielman, you don't like football. End of the third quarter. Pittsburgh 24, Buffalo six. Monday night football returns after this. Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan. Steelers up by 18, and on second and nine, it's Jerome Bettis already in triple figures tonight, and a first down up to the 48-yard <laughs> line. Yeah. Happy camper. He said, I feel like I'm running downhill. I Wade Phillips gave the look of a man who's looking uphill. That's... When the game balls are handed out, though, I, I don't want to be prejudiced because I'm a former, but I'd start with those five guys up front. They have dominated this ball game. Pittsburgh's offensive line. First and 10 at the 47 yard. Look at that line. average, guys. 8.1 yards of carry. Yeah, a lot of these yards are made after contact. Look, Serge. Well, here's a guy who had 100 or more rushing yards in 11 of his first 21 games out of Notre Dame as a Ram. And then he went south, and that's why he was expendable, and that's why they traded him. And now he's been rejuvenated, and he had gone 27 games without reaching 100 yards until last week, and now he's got him back-to-back. -back. I remember when the three of us and Kenny Wolf, our producer, Craig Janoff, our director, we did the Sugar Bowl, uh, Notre Dame against Florida, and Jerome Bettis was at Notre Dame, and dominated that game with his mm -hmm. with his running ability second down and five from the 48 yard line Bettis blocking to the outside tries to turn the corner this time Henry Jones equal to the task at the 47 yard line we saw Glenn Parker go out before calf injury there he is and uh, his return is not likely Reuben Brown will be coming back the second year starting left guard for the Bills we talked to him this evening. He says he will be able to return next week. Bettis comes out here. This There's nice Keevan Henry trying to walk off that stiff right leg. Sure. Right now with the big lead, though, I think Pittsburgh uh, can afford to rest some of their banged up people. Third down four. A screenplay that was read by three or four of the Buffalo defensive linemen. Chan Gailey's in the middle. He's got his hand up to his cheek with the baseball hat on. With Dick, Dick Hoke, Hoke there on, to the right. You're right. Uh, great running back for the Steelers for the 10 or 11 years. And Tim Lewis, Tim on, the Lewis on the left, who came into play last week, yeah. Al, when we were at Lambeau. And yep. we talked about the last time that Monday Night Football was in Green Bay. It was 86, a game where he got hurt. Yeah, so a, uh, a budding career 
nipped because he had a, a very narrow spinal column and suffered an injury that night and the doctor told him uh, I don't want you to play again and he did Josh Miller who has not had a particularly good night has this one fair caught by Copeland at the 17 yard line 12 36 to go in the fourth Pittsburgh up by 18 Steelers on top by a count of 24 to 6 as the Buffalo Bills begin this drive at the 17 yard line first and 10. Kelly and a gloomy night for Marv Levy continues one thing we should mention too because the last time we saw Marv on a Monday night football game he was uh, reporting to us from bedside he had prostate cancer last year. It was discovered. Cancer removed. Missed three weeks. Came back and feels great. He's as sharp as ever. Frustrated, but as sharp as ever at the age of 71 and still going strong. He and he still gets into a game, too. Yep. Chasing Papa Bear, isn't it? Yeah. In another uh, year and a half, Reed up to the 20-yard line. George Hallis coached until he was 72 years, 10 months old. So Marv would have to go into the 1998 season. And it is a goal of his. Marv Levy not even remotely thinking about retiring. Something pretty profound not too long ago. He said, if you're starting to think about retiring, you've already retired. Uh-huh. But his offense retired tonight. Early. <laughs> Third down and six. And late as well. Kirkland makes the interception at the 26 yard line. His Great. second of the night. And, and number third four. of the season. And number four against the Bills, although that's hardly Jim Kelly's fault. Hit his receiver in the hands. And so the domination in this series continues. Pittsburgh just eats up the Bills in Pittsburgh. My town doesn't even have a stoplight, much less. And it's Eric Keeger. Well, the roof hasn't caved in on the Buffalo Bills, but the wall caved in. Look at this. This A cement block wall actually collapsed here. And uh, as far as we know, nobody was hurt. And you can see. It's being cordoned off right now. You can see on the left there, to the right of that sign, that it's about a four-foot-high wall. And uh, luckily, nobody went with it. Maybe yeah. Jerome Bettis hit it. Yeah. <laughs> or it's built of adobe. Second down and nine from the 24-yard line. Thankfully, no one was hurt. <laughs> and that's, well, it should have been an interception, and that's Buffalo's night in microcosm. Good. Mark Maddox. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. Boston Market, carving out a better sandwich. All the team members at Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. And Nicotrol, six weeks, one step, take control with Nicotrol. Well, that's the second interception of the night dropped by the Bills. Remember very early in this ballgame, didn't Kurt Schultz have his hands on one that yep. would have been an easy touchdown? Looking back on it, boy, could Buffalo ever have used that early score. Five wide for Pittsburgh now. They didn't get it off yet. I don't think he got the timeout in time either. I think well, that'll go that'll go five yards against Pittsburgh. It was going to be a third and nine. If he didn't get the timeout, it would be a five-yard penalty and, and not a charge timeout. The delay of penalty was called before the timeout. Be a five-yard penalty, still third down against the offense. Well, now do they get charged for the timeout? Uh, no, because the play would have been whistled dead with a penalty. But you still took yeah, the, that's, that's, yeah. that's giving him a break. I mean, he, he signaled the timeout. It's, uh, that's that's, yeah. that's extending the uh, that's extending the olive branch to the offense, which they have, have done. Referees normally do that. Third down and 13. And Cordell Stewart over the middle. Bill Cowher said he can be a world-class receiver if he so chose. He wants to be a quarterback, but this kid is incredibly valuable in the role he plays right now. A lot of what we've seen this year and last year, there's no question Bill Cowher is right. He wanted to concentrate on being a wide receiver. He could be a super wide receiver. He wants to be a quarterback. 
We asked Bill Cowart, can you can he be a quarterback in the National Football League? He said, without even hesitating, absolutely he can. Can he be a great one? Well, that will be up to Cordell Stewart. But that's what he wants to be. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Bettis for four to the 10. Sometimes people with multiple talents are a victim of their own talents. The Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron looking down. Frank well taken especially you know I, I think of baseball when a guy can do too much he very often winds up as a utility man because he's so valuable on so many fronts and you really do not get the opportunity in a game like this where you have to to really focus on one thing second down and six from the 10 yard line Bettis goes nowhere although in response to that, he was allowed to compete for the quarterback position all the way through training camp, along with Miller and Tomzak. And Bill Cower made the determination during that process that Cordell was not ready to, to assume the leadership of a football team at the quarterback position. Now, that's certainly he believes that that will happen maybe next year, but not, not this year. And, of course, see, there's a lot of work for Cordell Stewart. He spends his time in the meetings with the quarterbacks. Well, he really is, it's very little time to work on what we're seeing right now as, as the receiver. Third and seven from the 11. And they give it to Pettis. And he gets gang tackled at the six yard line, setting up a fourth down and two. And Bill Cowers is right in sending out Norm Johnson. Last field goal was blocked. This is the guy who missed an extra point earlier in the game. Uh, this is. Let's this is what it. you do in practice. Let the guy get some work. Mm -hmm. 8.40 and the clock ticking remaining. This will be a 24-yard attempt. No. Johnson was at a 24-yard field goal. Josh Miller to hold it. And that's blocked again. And this could be a touchdown. Hit. Oh. And Marlon Kerner tried to pick the ball up and put. And Bill Cower has watched a guy who had a terrific year last year have two kicks blocked tonight. Well, that was blocked by Bruce Smith, who just came right up the middle. By the receiving team, they did not gain possession. So it's first down. Right, had they gained possession and then lost it, it would have been a different story. Right. Mm -hmm. That was just a breakdown in blocking. Bruce Smith was two to three yards into the Pittsburgh field goal formation when he blocked that ball. It might be over for some of the Bills, but it's not over for Bruce Smith. Watch 78. Right up the middle. Excuse me, where's the phone? There's another example. That time, though, by Buffalo. Simmons and Johnson giving some of the regulars a break with Kevin Henry on the sidelines with an injury. Second and 19. <laughs> Movement before the snap. You know, this was a, a defensive scheme that really goes back to Dom Capers, who was a defensive coordinator here here in Pittsburgh. He's now, of course, the Carolina Panthers head coach. And the Prior to the snap, ball starts, 67 offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. The blitzing scheme with people coming from all different directions, including the defensive backs into the blitz packages, and of course, Dick LeBeau, who was the defensive backfield coach here for all those years, now assumes the mantle of defensive coordinator. And you know, even though guys like Lloyd are gone and Kevin Green are gone, the system remains intact. And uh, I think you can see that it's a system that still works. Thomas. And he breaks one and then gets popped at the end by Williams. Jim Kelly tonight, four interceptions. And we mentioned at the top of the show, he came into tonight's game having thrown two touchdown passes and four interceptions. So now it's two and eight. Four interceptions in the previous two games. 
Third down and 11 from the 36 yard line. What a night. Chad Brown. You know, guys, you can take the three Monday night games that we've done here in the last four years between these two teams, and you couldn't tell one from the other. They've all been the same. Mm -hmm. Routes. <laughs> total yeah. and complete routes. And just total brutality against quarterback Jim Kelly. He went out of what? I think all three of them did he at one point. Well, let's put it this way. This moves Pittsburgh at home on Monday night under Bill Cowher to 6-0. and mm -hmm. And right now, the cumulative score is 140 to 33. More close one. And that bangs out of bounds at the 28 yard line with 6.29 left. Bills heading home to face Dallas. Steelers heading for a celebration and an off week. Send a limousine the next time we come to town. There's no question about that. I'm telling you, if, if this game next year would involve the Buffalo Bills, they may not board the airplane. Kelly's yeah. going to take that limousine out of town. That's yes. <laughs> quickly. <laughs> From the 29 yard line, the Pittsburgh Steelers begin this drive and they'll take time off the clock with Pegram. We have the, the uh, four. We have the calculators working right now trying to compute Jim Kelly's uh, quarterback rating. Uh, I, I'm assuming that this is the worst start uh, in his entire career. After three games, mm -hmm. he's got two touchdown passes and now eight interceptions. And right. he's been sacked 11 times. Yeah, this is a just a really horrible start for Kelly and the offensive team. Alex that, Van Pelt is sacked, loosening up. Sacked 11 times might explain some of the other. Oh, no question. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a universal breakdown of the Buffalo offensive machine. Pegram seeking the first down, and he has it oh. to the 46-yard line. Look at these guys. Yeah. Look at these guys blocking. Do you see Will Wolford going all the way down the field with that thing? All night long they've been doing it. Will Wolford. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Pegram. Oh, down. Picking up. Oh, grabbing that left seat. Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. So Bill Cower looked like he concerned. It. And he is in obvious pain. Well, that is getting a first-hand look. Here's the conclusion. That's Pegram. Mm -hmm. At the very end there, it looked like it flexed. Didn't appear to... He had a lot of weight on his back. He had a couple tacklers applying a lot of extra weight. Hard to... The knee is so fragile and... Sometimes you look at it and you and you see a replay and there's really nothing obvious that jumps mm -hmm. out at you, but mm -hmm. you know uh, something can flex and torque in there. And this Maddox coming in last number 55. Yeah, might have landed with a knee right on it. It's just it's just a very complex joint with a lot of different components inside of it that can that can that can break. Steelers have lost so mm -hmm. many with. Knee injuries, Ernie Mills in the Super Bowl game. We've already talked. Yep. Greg Lloyd in the loss there, and looks like Pegram at least yeah. can come off walking. That's encouraging. Maybe a little hot tub time will get that straightened mm -hmm. out. And again, the Steelers have the benefit of the off week, so they will not play another game for 13 days as they get set to face the Oilers. A week from Sunday here in Pittsburgh. Bills going home to face the Dallas Cowboys at Rich Stadium. There's Yancey Thigpen, another of the injured Steelers, uh, trying to get back in the next couple of weeks at wide receiver. Bettis taking more time off the clock. You know, guys, there's a trend developing in the NFL through three years as Jerome <laughs> continues his little trend tonight. Scoring is down this year. Last year, 42.9 points per game was the average in the league, and in only 12 of the 42 games thus far, as you look at Eric Pegram being worked on, in only 12 of the 42, and you can see, so we, we all understand the difference here. 
four points, six points per game less, and we don't want to overstate it. But there it is for you. Think about that. I wonder if maybe the offense is a difficult, think about that. <laughs> difficult thing, much more difficult than defense to put together. And so many players have moved from different teams and to different systems. You just kind of wonder if maybe that is an impacting a little bit upon that. It might change down the line. As uh, Bill Cowher talked about it last night, he said as more new players start to fit in, the systems start to work again. And It'll probably uh, the points probably will go up. Well, this game, of course, with only 30 points being scored, Pittsburgh doing their part to hold up the average. A failure by uh, a failure by Buffalo, though, to do their part. I I think it's fascinating that now we have eight undefeated teams in the NFL, and they'll be participating in four games next week. They are all playing each other, including the, the one on Monday night, Indian Miami on third and one. Cordell Stewart I wasn't just setting up a promo. No. The, the other games, Denver at Kansas City, Green Bay at Minnesota, San Francisco at Carolina. There it is. And the other thing, the, you know, the amazing thing on the on the flip side, you have they're all divisional games. Well, you have you have winless teams. You have three games next week with winless teams facing right. each other. But every one of the undefeated teams is playing the other team in their division that's yep. undefeated. Yep. You know, Kansas City and Denver playing. Minnesota and Green Bay are playing. Indianapolis and Miami are playing. Carolina and San Francisco. It's it's really a, a real quirk in the schedule. Yeah. As Tom Zack gives the ball, I don't mean Jamie. <laughs> and then, and then, and then you have the, the the other side of the coin next week: Giants and Jets, Arizona at New Orleans, where we understand Kent Graham is going to supplant Boomer Esiason as the Cardinals starter, and Seattle at Tampa Bay. None of those teams with a solitary win. Well, the good news is at least somebody will come out of there with a one in the plus column. Yep. The better news is none of those games is on Monday night next week. We'll take what we have. Miami at Indianapolis. Second and seven at the 40. And this is John Whitman again, the rookie out of Penn State. On the road, we'll have this Steeler team against Miami. Late in the year. Late in the year. And we'll see him against Kansas City in three weeks. Out. Well, that's some story, the way Jimmy Johnson has the Dolphins out of the gate like that at 3-0. and yeah. And running the football, they've gone over 100 yards uh, running the football in each of their three wins so far. That is really a story. Yes, it is. Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Irving Spikes and uh, the Dolphins going to the Dome next week in Indianapolis. Two-minute warning. The Steelers that much time away from their second win in three games. Minutes to go in Pittsburgh. Happy crowd filing out, heading home. The Steelers have, uh, after that disaster in Jacksonville, turned it around in a large hurry. And so this will be an 11th consecutive regular season game in this Pittsburgh Buffalo series that will have been won by the home team. We say regular season because in the middle of that in 1992, Buffalo did come in here and win a playoff game against the Steelers. Which must seem like forever ago to Marv Levy. <laughs> Left knee sprain is the report on Eric Pegram. And again, we mentioned that they do have the off week, so he has the extra time to get ready for the uh, Houston Oilers. Oh, how they love their Steelers here. And of course, why wouldn't they love pro football in this town? The championships that they were treated to by the great teams of Chuck Knoll back in the 70s. So many great Monday night That's, games here. Oh, man. He moved in here in the year it was built. And of course, there's a guy who yeah. was a part of it. Well, he gave us many thrills Vince Vaughn yeah, under the dugout I noticed yep. from the 39 yard line the rookie out of Penn State John Whitman the fullback tackled by Thomas Smith well that, that's Kelly's rating for tonight and uh, even if you don't understand much about ratings we can tell you that that's horrible 18.4 <laughs> That leaves out the sacks, too. He took uh, quite a pounding night with a couple of sacks, and he was hit so many times after he delivered the ball, and Eric Pegram is at least able to leave 
the field walking and not even looking. Of course, Jim grew up in, in nearby East Brady, very near Pittsburgh. He had a lot of his hometown fans he stayed very close to throughout his career. They were here tonight, and I'm sure they suffered right along with him. Guys, uh, Kenny Wolf telling me that makes 226 yards rushing for the Steelers tonight against Buffalo. 226 mm -hmm. yards. For the first down, they're just going to take this clock down all the way up. Well, now it's down to 225. <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of kneel downs with Kenny Wolf a couple of yards. It's you. Those of you that follow the game on a regular basis know what a dominating number that is. It's 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 impossible to lose a football game when you rush for 225 yards. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened, but it's that is just that is just real domination by that group right there. And Bettis accounting for uh, a large percentage of of those yards. 133 to be precise. Pegram with 84. I think they're down to 224. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill Cower in his fifth year at the age of 39, still the third youngest coach in the National Football League. Third youngest coach in his division, isn't he? Yep. Behind Dave Shula and Jeff Fisher. And he's becoming one of the masters. And there is a, a master, but poor Marv has had better nights and so has Bruce Smith as the Bills come in and get shellacked again. Marv congratulating Bill and saying something to the effect of I'll see you in Buffalo. I'll see you guys in Indianapolis. All right. Well, do you know how many points were scored in the red zone tonight inside the 20? You will want to know beginning September 30th when you can win trips to the Super Bowl for the rest of your life as one of the grand prizes to play by Coca-Cola and watch Monday Night Football. Coke in the red zone. So the final score tonight at Three Rivers Stadium, the Pittsburgh Steelers 24 and the Buffalo Bills 6. Next week, the Dolphins and the Colts, two undefeated teams from Indianapolis. Until then, Al Michaels for Frank for Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan saying good night from Pittsburgh.